This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. Oh, quickly fly through Carolis and Irina, will you? Example 3 on page 74. One of the reasons you do working one is because it's very easy to forget what the non-controlling interest share is. And I'm not going to embarrass the two of you that did it, but you've taken the wrong percentage for the non-controlling interest. I've told you, so you've now corrected it, but one of you has taken 40 instead of 45. Uh, I don't know what the other one took. So that's the reason why you do that, because you're showing the exam and you're showing the marker that you know it's 45%. Okay, you then make a silly mistake, but it's not an expensive mistake. But if you don't put that 45 in, he doesn't know where you've got it from, where you've got your figure 40 or 50 from. Another easy mistake is to apply 55%. Because through working two and working three, we've been using 55%, it's very easy to put 55% in working four. And again, that's why when you're doing working four, and I have consistently done it, when you're doing working four, you put in the non-controlling interest percentage. If you put it in as 55, okay, you've made a mistake, but at least you can see what you've done. PUP calculation Amazing. Amazing. PUP times three quarters. 
taking mark up instead of gross profit. PUP times two thirds. It's always, these questions, is always a question of reading it carefully. You'll find, or when I used to do a lot of marking, you'll find that a marker would often write on your script for you to be given back when we used to mark at financial training. We'd often write RTFQ on a student's script. RTFQ is the abbreviation for read the question. Read the full question. Read the question. Gross profit, markup. Two thirds, one third. Three quarters? Where did three quarters come from? So 14033 is the proof when we get through to doing the comprehensive income. PUP, this is something which apparently I have not emphasized. Once you've calculated the PUP, you've got to do something with it. Clearly you're going to reduce inventory, but it also reduces the retained earnings of the company which has recognized the profit. Many of you, a majority of you, and I don't know why, a majority of you are not putting this PUP into your working three. And I didn't pick it up when we were looking at, at statements of financial position. Once you've got the PUP figure, it needs to be deducted in the records of the selling company and it needs to be deducted from the inventory. And you're missing it off for some reason. Please don't miss it off. How much of that 10,000 dividend are we going to receive? How much of that 10,000 dividend are we due to receive? 5,500. We own 55%, don't we? Yeah. And how much have we accounted for in our income statement? We've already accounted for 5,500 correctly. So the parent company will record within their own income statement and is therefore included within this 23,500. They have recorded the receipt of the dividend. If they hadn't, then you would have to put it in. In this proof, you would need to put the dividend within that proof. If we had not included 5,500 within that figure of 23,5, that would have started off as 18, per the question, and then add on the dividend receivable from the subsidiary. We ignore it for the purposes of presentation of the comprehensive income statement, but for the proof, it must go in. Working 4B, two marks. One of you put 40%. And there's the income statement. Dollar for dollar, 1414. Cancellation. Increased cost of sales by the PUP. I've stopped the statement at 34133, but down at the bottom there I've got dividends and NCI. They would have come off under the old-fashioned way of presenting income statements. We would have taken off the NCI, we would have deducted the dividend, and that leaves us with the 14033, which was the proof figure in working three.